will join forces with the main army and attack Garrick Mark. It's a fortress built on steep ground, but it's never seen battle. That means we don't know much about it from a military perspective. But if we use all of the power at our disposal, we will capture it. From a purely mathematical standpoint, we most certainly have the power to win. If the battle becomes a clash of beasts with inhuman strength, you will be our only hope. I believe in you. I'm relying on you to lead the Black Eagle Strike Force to victory. It is not up to Her Majesty to bring the students to our cause. That task falls to you. You are uniquely able to provide emotional support. Please use that gift to guide others down the path that Lady Edelgard has laid before us. I ask you to do this from the bottom of my heart. The most important nobles in the Empire are known for taking power from the previous Emperor, my father included. I didn't think it possible that the Imperial Princess could ascend the throne so easily. However, it seems that both my father and Kaspars are supporting Edelgard. Having both the Minister of Domestic Affairs and Minister of Military Affairs on your side gives you total control over the Empire's military and finances. You must have been making preparations for quite some time without anyone noticing. <sighs> that could have gotten dangerous fast. If I stayed at the monastery, I would have had to fight my father. We aren't especially close, but he's not an opponent I'd want to face. I'd almost rather fight a monster. Anyway, it looks like he's going to be leading the Western units. I wonder if we'll wind up fighting the Kingdom's army, and who decided to fight for the church. But I had to think long and hard about this one. Since birth, I've believed in the teachings of Saros without ever questioning them. But Her Majesty's words are true. To think that the Archbishop can take on such a monstrous form. Yes. I'm Randolph von Burglis. I'm not very high in the ranks yet, but I'm more or less a general. Just like Caspar, I'm from House Burglies. My mother married into House Burglies after I was born, so my position within the family is rather lowly. But I'm determined to make something of myself in this battle to bring glory to my part of the family, for the sake of my mother and sister. I believe that this is the first time we have met. My name is Ladislava. I have the great honor of leading Lady Edelgard's personal guard. Her Majesty is as hard on others as she is on herself. She may seem composed, but that is only because she conceals her more passionate emotions. For that reason, she is often misunderstood. But now she has you by her side. I find that most reassuring. I look forward to working with you. I've heard the name Lord Vestra mentioned among the Purge noble families of the Empire. He's Hubert's father, but Hubert seems rather unconcerned about it. That alone is why we soldiers find Hubert quite frightening. Yes. To be frank, I'm not sure whether I should believe all that Edelgard says. But if her words are true, I think it's best to be her ally. So I'll fight. 
I'm not at ease with that decision just yet, but I'll stick by it. Okay. I came this far mostly on impulse, but I wonder if it was the right choice. Everything will be okay, right, Professor? I'm not wrong, am I? If I know that you think it's okay, I feel like it will be easier to believe in myself. The Empire and Bridget were once warring with each other. But now, I have made the decision to be fighting with the Empire. It is a choice of irony, I feel. But I am having no regrets. My belief is with you, and with Edelgard. Edelgard became Emperor and raised an army, huh? Who knew the kid had it in her? I mean, yeah, of course, I knew she'd be Emperor eventually, but... The more I think about it, the more surprised I am. I wonder who's gonna win. Thinking about it makes me scared. We're fighting the Knights of Saros. But still, I know you'll figure something out. <laughs> Teacher, I asked Edelgard what happened to my father. He was dismissed as Prime Minister and is under house arrest in the Imperial capital. He always was a greedy, arrogant man. Some would say that this is the fate he deserves. And yet, I cannot help but feel indignant. After all his hard work for the Empire, to be disgraced like this. I am conflicted, Professor. I do not know what to do. As the next Duke Iyer, should I follow Edelgard into battle? Black Eagle Strike Force, eh? I like it. It's really a twist of fate that brought me to this side of things. But I'm still proud to be here. home. Hubert told me something. He said my father was stripped of his title. I guess he did as he pleased and opposed Edelgard. Wait. Does that mean my father's going to be home all the time now? On second thought, I think I'm fine right here. I'm so sick of it all. There is so much to be done, yet all I encounter are new problems and pitfalls. Ugh. Sometimes I wish I could spend just one day doing absolutely nothing and gorging myself on sweets. Do you mean it? Just the thought makes me happy. But... Hubert would never allow it. Indeed. It may not be possible now, but one day we will know the joys of Eidolon. Mark my words. Is that a smirk I spy? Is it so amusing to you, me daydreaming of free time? getting an idea of what you think of me. But let's put all that aside for now. There is something I've been meaning to tell you. I'm afraid this might sound a bit... sentimental. However... I want to thank you. Because of you, I feel I can walk my faded path without losing myself. If I were alone, I might have lost perspective and become a harsh leader with a heart of ice. But I'm not alone. With you by my side, I'm somehow free to be not only a leader, but simply Edelgard. A 
Until now, no one has been able to surpass me, much less command me. I have always been seen as an untouchable princess or emperor. No one spoke to me as an equal or met my gaze without flinching. It was lonely, terribly lonely. The only person I could rely on as I tried to claw my way out of the darkness was myself. But you, you have been a brilliant light. Somehow you have chased the darkness away. And for that, What is it, Hubert? Nothing in particular. I was just recalling your impressive skill with the bow. I'm willing to bet you could put an arrow through the neck of an enemy general from quite a distance. In fact, to any leader's bodyguard, I would go so far as to say you pose the most dangerous kind of threat. Don't worry your fragile little self. Your lady princess is safe. I wouldn't shoot my employer. I would certainly hope not, but there are some mercenaries to whom a contract means little. And you would do well to remember that Lady Edelgard is no mere princess. You should take care to learn the proper form of address for your employer. I said lady. I already told you, I'm not going to break the princess's contract. What did I just say? Proper address, right. Next time. My patience has limits, you know. For the moment, you may stand in Lady Edelgard's good graces. But if you become a problem, I will not hesitate to eliminate you. You're unstable, Hubert. Be careful who you threaten. I don't take kindly to those who get in the way of my contracts. Is that a threat? Just some advice. Linhart, there you are. Observant as ever, Ferdinand. What can I help you with? You have been utilizing clever tricks to give me the slip. But not today. Prepare yourself! A noble cannot escape from his duty. Hold these words in your heart. It seems you really mean it this time. I suppose I have no choice but to outmatch you. Finally, a little enthusiasm. You are bravely stepping upon the path of nobility. Let us begin! Come now, Ferdinand. Don't be foolish. I can't possibly train with you. I have places to be. Wait! I will not allow you to get away! I... I can't... I can't run anymore. Just... Admit defeat! Can't we... Just a minute. Ferdinand, let me... Let me catch my breath. Well, maybe just for a moment. I could use a rest myself. I am surprised you could run so far. I had assumed that all that lounging around would have dulled your constitution. But I had a difficult time keeping up. The fear of having to exert myself really helped. You're none too slow yourself. It's been a while since I ran like that. It actually feels pretty good. It does, does it not? Well, how about we say that thrilling chase was your training for the day? If you will excuse me, I am going to run even more, so I can catch you next time. After all the running you already did, that's our Ferdinand. You always give everything your all, don't you? <laughs> and what is wrong with that? Nothing whatsoever, Ferdinand. I mean that.
We will soon arrive at Garigmok Monastery. Forcing a surrender here is extremely significant, both strategically and symbolically. Of course, this is personal as well. This is where we all came together to learn and grow. I have no intention of yielding to our former classmates, so I ask that you prepare yourselves for anything. I'm not thinking about friends right now, and I'm certainly not prepared. Damn it, don't go around saying things that lower morale before we even get started. I'm ready! Let's go! Let's fight! I have nothing to lose aside from my friends who are here with me. Does that answer? I have been ready for this since leaving my land of home. I will fight and win! How can you prepare to fight? Maybe I can... prepare to repair. There is no reason that I should not be prepared. It is my duty to stand up and battle. Thank you all. Now. Let's talk strategy. As the raiding force, we will attack the area nearest to the monastery. The Knights of Saros certainly won't stand down after they catch sight of Her Majesty and the Professor. At the same time, the remaining areas will be surrounded and annihilated by the main army. In other words, we are the decoy that must suppress the enemy's most elite soldiers. We know more about the area near the monastery than anyone else in the Imperial Army. Still, we must prepare for the worst. It's possible we will have to face the Archbishop's true form. The Immaculate, fight with all you have, but don't be reckless. As promised, I will leave the command to our Professor. Not only will we all survive this, but we will undoubtedly emerge victorious. This will be our first battle as the Black Eagle Strike Force. All the more reason to prevail.
Friends, our opportunity for victory will come, but first, we must see to our defenses. The city's defenders are trying to stall for time. We must crush them swiftly. We should be wary of ambushes as well. Vladislava is being pushed on the left flank. We must push back with equal force. I will get the victory. Flame Spirit, protect me. Stay focused. Ugh. Battle. Stop. I am Ferdinand von Eyre.
is nothing. Hardly worth my time. I still have a long way to go. I'm only getting better with age. within?
this was beneath me. Greatness awaits me. Didn't even enjoy it. It's simple logic. You could have at least tried. We need. I knew Her Majesty's allies would help us out. Battle, a chance to grow. Unfortunately, you must die here. You should never have defied the goddess. Child's play. Not enough. You shall not pass. I will protect Garrig Mok.
If you side with the Empire, if you turn your sword on the Church and on the Kingdom, I care not who you are. I will end you just the same. Let this be a lesson. In my master's name, I cannot allow myself to fall here. I must withdraw. You will survive this hardship. Just hold on! I'm impressed. I'm grateful. Retreat while you still can, Flane. I beg you! Understood. Stay safe, uh, brother. We will lend the Empire strength. Don't worry, we're allies now. I understand you must have many questions, but they'll have to wait until after the battle. with age.
Show no mercy to anyone who attacks Rhea. Put your lives on the line to protect us. I would have preferred to have more time to prepare, but we cannot delay any longer. Come forth! Protect Garrick Mock Monastery from those despicable rebels! I'll crush them all. Her enemies are my enemies. It's a long road yet. Thank you. 
tribute. Marvel at our strategy. This strength will serve Lady Edelgard well. I can fight through anything. I want to be all I can. Gotta kill you! <coughs> Lady Rhea, I couldn't fight hard enough. Sin, your sacrifice will not be in vain. As expected. Thank you. 
traveled. wouldn't have happened in my youth. Another one down. Technique never betrays. I am Ferdinand von Eyer.
over? You can't have me now, you suck, you know it! Should I have held back? We must all do our part. More polish never hurt. I am Thunder Catherine, and I will slay all of Lady Rhea's enemies, including you! Are we done? I'll grow as strong as I can. Each battle, a chance to grow. Boring. So you have sullied yourself by joining the Rebels? I hope you came prepared to breathe your last! Bye. 
killed you. How dare you betray me? You worthless piece of garbage. I will punish you myself! Prepare yourself! Allow Garrick Mock or my mother to fall. You will not be forgiven. Professor, look out. The castle is crumbling! We must escape! Professor! Take cover! Professor! Thank you. In Imperial Year 1181, the new Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hersfeld, led a strategic assault against the monastery at Garrig Mach. Though her own losses were great, her foes had no choice but to surrender. Archbishop Rhea commanded the Knights of Seros, leading from the front lines against the Imperial Army. After a hard-fought battle, she was forced to retreat to Ferdiad, the capital of Fargus, where she must now plan her next move. With this single attack, the Adrestian Empire officially launched its offensive against the Holy Kingdom of Fargus and the Leicester Alliance. The unification of Odlin has begun. Part 2. Crimson Flower. Ethereal Moon. Beyond Escape. It is Imperial Year 1185. Half a decade has passed since Emperor Edelgard ascended the Imperial throne, yet the continent of Fodlin still remains lost in a tempest of turmoil and bloodshed. In the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, King Dimitri has welcomed Archbishop Rhea and her knights, who were driven out of Garrick Mach to the kingdom capital. As they work to build a unified front, the war with the Empire rages on to the west. Meanwhile, Claude, leader of the Alliance, staves off Imperial intervention by strategically stirring up conflicts between Leicester lords in an effort to feign neutrality. As events unfold, Edelgard and her Black Eagle strike force begin to take action in an attempt to break the war's current state of deadlock. You. How long do you intend to sleep? Your body is awake. 
Your eyes must open now, and you must find the strength to stand upon those legs of yours. Like so much rain, a pool of blood has fallen to the ground. As spears and arrows pierce the earth, it weeps. And even now, it weeps. In order to survive, they kill. And so, the people of this world are lost in an abyss of suffering. They weep as well. The only one who truly knows the nature of such things is I. Or rather, you. Excuse me? Are you saying you have forgotten who I am? Get on your feet. Right now! I'll coddle you no more! You are just like a child, always needing me to hold your hand. Hey, are, are you awake? We're in a village at the base of the monastery. What are you doing in a place like this? I honestly didn't expect to find someone floating away down the river. Garrick Mach is upstream of here, but that place was abandoned. Huh? You don't know? The Church of Saros isn't there anymore. Though, there have been some folks still living there in the five years since... Well, you know. Regardless, the Imperial Army has taken over now. Um, are you feeling alright? You didn't hit your head or anything, did you? It's the Ethereal Moon of the year 1185. It's been nearly five years since the monastery fell. Tomorrow was supposed to be the Millennium Festival, but who's got time to think about things like that? Uh, yeah, that's what I said. But with the war and the Archbishop still missing at all, I doubt there's a soul to be found who has enough blessings worth counting. Hey, slow down, will ya? Where do you think... Are you crazy? The Imperial Army is there. Come on, I, I promise I won't say you're a coward. Just forget about going anywhere near the monastery. You just remember I tried to stop you, got it? It's not on my conscience if you wind up dead. Unbelievable. Five years ago to the day. If things had continued on as they were, today would have been the Millennium Festival. Halt! Who's there? It can't be! Professor? Is it really you? But I searched everywhere and never found a trace. My teacher... What have you been doing all this time? Where have you been? Joking? At a time like this? You do realize it's been five years since you disappeared. Do you have any idea how guilty I felt? How broken my heart was? I searched high and low after you vanished. Although there was no proof, I somehow knew you were alive. All this time, I led everyone as best I could, and fought with all my heart. It's been a difficult path to walk alone. <sighs> Welcome back, my teacher. I'm so happy that you're safe. Five years. Such a short time, but it feels like an eternity ago. Do you... still feel the way you did all those years ago? You said then that you would fight at my side no matter how many enemies we should amass. As for me, my resolve has not faltered. I'm determined as ever to see this through to the end. I will defeat the False Goddess. I will save this world from those creatures and give humanity its freedom back. So, my teacher, are you prepared to stand with me? I... I thank you, truly. Now then, 
I assume you understand the situation at hand, yes? Another joke? Or are you telling the truth? I suppose you must be. In that case, I'll tell you all that has transpired as you slumbered these past five years. And that is where we are now. The war is at a stalemate. Dimitri is the new king of Fargus. It's clear that his territory will continue to support the church. Meanwhile, Claude's leadership has thrown the Alliance into chaos. He maintains neutrality in their internal conflict. The situation has created a deadlock. We've been awaiting an opportunity for our squadron to return to the monastery. With you in the fray, I believe the state of the war will shift immediately. The Church, as well as the Kingdom and the Alliance. The time has come to eliminate them all. Although we were of different houses, we were companions who lived and learned together. Some of our ranks are hesitant to battle against them. However, knowing that you're alive is sure to raise their spirits. Good. Well then, I believe it's time for a little reunion. The Black Eagle Strike Force never lost faith. They knew you were alive and have been awaiting your return. Let's not keep them waiting any longer. Well now, that face is certainly familiar. I am glad to see you alive and well, Professor. Professor! It's me, Bernie! Do you remember me? I can't believe you're here! I can't believe it! Is this a dream? Can we really be this lucky? This is not dreaming. Our Professor is with us again. Welcome to the back. I mean... Welcome back! Our group isn't the same without you. I am overjoyed to see you again. It's been so long. Seeing you again fills my heart with hope. Great! Now everything will be easy. Um, that's great you're safe, Professor. I'm deeply, deeply moved. Quite the reunion, isn't it, Professor? Everyone's happy to see you. Come on, Edelgard. You must be happier than all of us combined. She took it really hard when you disappeared, Professor. Of course, we did our very best in your absence. And there was never a day that we doubted you would return to us. Edelgard has been leading us as Emperor. But... After you disappeared, it became apparent that you were her anchor. It gives me regret to be admitting this, but... Our power is not enough. The only one who can be meeting Edelgard's expectations is you, Professor. Most impressive of all is your uncanny ability to bring a smile to everyone's face. In the years since you vanished, we have not lost anyone from our ranks. We all longed for your presence and your leadership, myself included. It seems fitting to view this as a new beginning for the Black Eagle Strike Force. We already have our target. Yes, we must eliminate the Alliance before moving on to fight the Kingdom and the Church. 
However, that doesn't necessarily mean we must occupy the entirety of the Alliance. House Regan stands against the Empire. Therefore, our target is Deirdre, the aquatic capital. We must cross the Aramid River, which separates the Empire and the Alliance. To do that, we must take the largest bridge across it. The Great Bridge of Murden. Murden connects the monastery and the Imperial capital to the east. It is the shortest route there. An Alliance stronghold has been built at the Great Bridge. We'll take that and then head north. At the same time, we must defeat the one who defends it, Judith von Daphne. If we can also take control of Daphne territory, it would be greatly beneficial to us. Prepare yourselves. The next battle will be a momentous one. Join me, my friends, as we begin our journey to bring peace and solace to this war-ravaged world. Hey, Professor, something's been bothering me. Remember that suspicious guy I chased after back when I was a student? A knight scolded me for it, but at the time, I really thought I was doing the right thing. Now that I've had more experience on the battlefield, though... I've been looking for you. There isn't much time, so I'll keep this brief. The knights encountered a band of brigands while out marching. It was hard fought, but we prevailed. Our soldiers are highly trained, but the enemy was formidable, and we weren't expecting combat. There were a number of casualties among our troops. Much appreciated, but there's a reason I need to bring this to your attention. The brigands all bore identical tattoos of a scorpion on their arms. Please, keep an eye out for that mark in the future. Oh no. Don't mention it. If you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my duties. <laughs> Heck of a coincidence, right? As soon as I mention that suspicious guy, this happens. But some of the knights died in combat. They died because of what I did five years ago. This is my fault. If I'd stayed quiet and tracked the guy down like you said, we would have stopped those brigands sooner, and I wouldn't have blood on my hands. But he probably wouldn't have. Now those knights, they're not coming back. We both know it. This is all my fault. I may sound terrible, but you won't notice when everyone else sings, too. Is this necessary? I'll sing if I must. Professor, please do not be concerned. I just did too much overworking and lost my strength. Yes, I have no problems. 
Accept my apology for giving you worry. I have sorrow. Uh, I mean, I am sorry to be fainting at a time like this. Even though I was not asking for your care and attention, you gave it willingly. Um, will you have a listen to me? There is something that I must be saying. I am thinking you already have knowledge of why I came to Fodlin. Not for studying, but as a hostage for the Empire. So that Bridget would not be rebelling anymore. It feels like... a knife against my throat. That I am making my grandfather obey the Empire. Because I am a hostage, it is not an option to be giving up. I must be fighting, and winning, and staying alive. I must do anything to be making life better for Bridget. To be making Bridget and the Empire stand as equals. That is what my people are wanting from me. And what my grandfather, the King of Bridget, is wanting. That is a truth. I wonder what I should be doing. I want to be granting the wants of my tribe. So their wants are my own, correct? What I really want... I have understanding. Wait, no, I... I actually do not have understanding. What I am understanding is that there is something I am not understanding. When I know what my true want is, I give you my promise that I will be telling you first. My future is bright.
I've passed, have I? I passed? Well done, me. Thanks to you, Professor. 